Tati Taking this opportunity, we will refresh your precepts. Okay, uh, chant together. Panati pata veramani sika padang samadhiyami adina dana veramani sika padang samadhiyami kame sumi chachara Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Sawada Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami Sura Meraya Majapamadatana Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami. And we will follow by uh, salutations to the Triple Gems. Let's chant together. Iti Piso Bhagawa Arahang Sama Sambudo. Bija charana sampano sukato loka vidu anutaro purisadama sarati sata dewa manusana Buddha Bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Santintiko Akaliko Ehipasiko Opanaiko Pachatam vetitapo binyo hiti Supati pano vakavato savaka sanko Pati pano vakavato savaka sanko Nyaya pati pano vagavato savaka sango Samichi pati pano vagavato savaka sango Yadi tang chatari purisa yogani Ata purisa pugala Esa bhagavato sabaka sango Ahuneyo pahuneyo Dakineyo anjari karaniyo Anutarang punya keta lokasati sadu sadu sadu. I like to set up our mind in a short five to ten minutes uh, practice of uh, loving kindness. 
since uh, today's topic is talking about blessings and uh, sharing love, we'll also invite blessings. Yeah. Sit in a comfortable position. Meditation is about relaxation. Meditation is about connecting to your heart to radiate love from our heart. It's not so much on an intellectual exercise, but uh, more on the feelings and the connections. So with this in mind, just relax. You might just take a deep breath in. Your body and slowly exhale. Deep breath in. Quickly exhale. Bring your body in this way. One more time. Deep breath in. To do share love, we must first have loving kindness toward oneself. In your mind, and wish yourself, may I be free from danger. Just wish yourself gently. May I be free from danger. Be free from physical suffering. May I be free from mental suffering. May I be well and happy. With these loving thoughts towards oneself, you might come to your mind a person that you respect. It could be your parents or your teachers, somebody that you respect. Share the love with this person, respectable person, wishing him or her. May they be free from danger. May they be free from physical suffering. They be free from mental suffering. And may they be well and happy. With the love and gratitude. Right now, come to your mind. All the love brothers in your life. Wishing them, may they be free from danger. May they be free from physical suffering. May they be free from mental suffering.
May they be well and happy. Continue with these gentle feelings that you had in your heart. Come to your mind, all the sisters in your life. Wishing all the females may all be free from danger. They be free from physical sufferings. May they be free from mental sufferings. May they be well and happy. Returning your thoughts to the room that you are in right now. Thinking for all the people sitting around you, wishing them, may they be free from danger. They be free from physical sufferings. May they be free from mental sufferings. May all be well and happy. Turning your attentions to your breath. Get connect to yourself. Go and gently open your eyes. Our sessions, okay? Good. Yeah, every one of us who wants blessings, please do meta uh, meditations on a daily basis. Uh, okay. So, what is uh, blessings to you? Do you like blessings? Yes, so what is blessings? Why we like to receive blessings? Maybe we start with why. Why we like to receive blessings? You want me to answer? Okay, I think for most of us, when we talk about blessings, I think sometimes we have in our mind, oh, maybe I'm not, my life is not good enough yet. I hope I can achieve happiness that is more than what I have at this point in time. Do you feel that way when you go to someone and say, you know, you know, I hope to receive some blessings? You hope something happier to happen to your life. So it could be like, you know, you want to achieve something that is more than what you have or you already have a lot and you don't want to lose it you don't want to lose it so you ask for blessing please protect may all the assets all the love that i have don't 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 go away correct or not i remember when i was young um then my parents was taoist so we always go to the temple and pray 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 
but not pray for not pray for wisdom, but always pray for good luck, good health, success. Yeah, that was the kind of uh, culture I was brought up with. And that was my understanding of what blessings was all about. So when I travel around the world, uh, I went to many countries, different Buddhist country. And I also noticed uh, asking for blessings is, is not just unique to one uh, culture. It's actually spread to all. And it's not just for Buddhists. But for other religion, everybody, I think it's a simple human wish of wanting something better to happen in their life. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people without the, the wisdom, they, they might think that blessings is about asking, asking, give me more, give me more, give me more. But is that how, do we, is that how we receive blessings in our life? What do you think? Have you, think about, have you thought about this issue? I think it's about asking more. Or what is there any steps so that we can receive blessings in the Buddhist way? Any idea? Good, yes, very good. Yes. Okay, never mind. You're a quiet audience today. <laughs> yeah. It's happy new, it's Chinese new year. Yeah, you know, have a happy moon. <laughs> no need to be so serious. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe I'd like to start by sharing what is happiness. I think happiness we can, uh, I will subclassify into two types of happiness. One type of happiness is mundane happiness. Such as most people, what you all ask for, happy life happy family, success in career, have enough wealth, uh, good health, and be safe. These are all the mundane happiness that most of us will ask for when we go to the temple and buy, 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 or ask the monk to you know, give you holy water and all that. I think most of us belong to that category. But in the Buddhist context, happiness has another deeper level, which is the super mundane happiness. And super mundane happiness will only, um, we will only get this super mundane happiness if we were to put the Dharma into our daily practice and we practice sincerely purifications of our sila followed by purifications of our mind this is where we can get into calm abiding. Then we can increase our mind strength by practice samatha meditations to strengthen our mind. And after that, we can do vipassana meditations to understand things as they are. So that, you know, our mind are not so attached to all the mundane stuff. That we have freedoms and our mind is at ease most of the time. So this is the kind of uh, super mundane happiness that uh, Buddha promised us if we follow him, follow the Dharma and practice according to what he teach. And according to the Kamala Sutta, you know, Buddha never say, just have faith with me, you know, just do blindly. He never say that. Try, do it. And if you experience it, this is where you gain the faith. Faith is one of the very, very important elements of receiving blessings. There are three components that I thought of sharing, um, you know, how to receive blessings. First is faith. Do you have faith with triple gems? So what level of faith you have? Your cell more important or triple gems more important? Ah, this is the real test, no? <laughs> test, uh, faith also have different levels. And uh, different type of faith, it actually attracts the different connections. We and the so-called the Buddhas and all the Dharma protectors. 
So sometimes uh, people might ask me, you know, Buddha already passed into Nibbana, how can he bless me? You have these doubts in your mind before? No, you have 100% faith. <laughs> okay, though Buddha passed into the so-called Nibbana, his uh, blessings is still around. And also Buddha in the Buddha Sasana, you know, we believe that there's six, these six realms of beings. And there are a lot of guarding dewas, higher beings out there that we can't, we can't see. If you're not meditators, you cannot see them. Uh, if they see that, hey, you know, these Buddhists are so quiet and they've been doing good, they are so sincere and they're asking for help. And they will bless you in that way. They will bless you. And that is why if somebody has a lot of faith, when you go to the temple to ask for certain favors, you know, for me, it's like if I'm very sincere with my intention, and if my intention is pure, I feel that I do receive a lot of blessings in my life. Do you have this experience? Yeah, I see someone knocking your head. So, our pure intentions when we ask for blessings. And the faith that we have when we ask for the blessings are super, super important. Have you experienced miracles before in terms of blessings? No? Not yet. Not yet. For myself, maybe because I was, I'm in this trick for a long time. <laughs> And uh, along the way, uh, even in different traditions, within the Buddhists, in different traditions, I have seen many unexplainable, intellectually cannot explain things happen. Like, say someone was sick. And they are divulged, they are very devoted Buddhists. And they really want their relatives to get well. So they ask to the temple, they go to the temple and ask the Bhante and say, you know, my so-and-so is sick. Could you please do some holy water so that he can drink? And if the intention is pure, and if the, in, the practitioner intention is also pure, by the two pure intentions coming together, magic happens. And I've seen this not just once, not just twice, but quite a number of times. By doing good uh, and in return, ask for like, you know, to get the person's well, it is something that I've been seeing quite a lot. I share with you my own personal story of my family members. Three years ago, two of my relatives concurrently diagnosed with cancer on the same month. And both of them was a third stage cancer. One of my relatives, he, he, he really wanted to get himself well. So he go to the temple and ask for blessings and all that. And we asked him to do homework. Like, you know, can you do your chanting? Can you do good? Uh, you know, I'm sick, you know, I need to use a lot of money, you know, you still ask me to do donation. That was his thought. And do you do your chanting? Very tired, lay, cannot, lay. You know, that was his kind of attitude. Okay, that's my first relative. My second relative, she's also sick. She went through the chemo, which was very difficult for her. But we, I, I share with her the same way, you know, please start to cultivate your mind and uh, be generous. So she started to put uh, chanting into her daily life. She was not a Buddhist before. And she started to attend Buddhist classes to learn the real Dhamma. And on top of that, she go to temple because, you know, being um, a Taoist background, we always like to go to the temple and do some donations to ask for favor in return. 
And she does. And she do it not just for herself. She's not rich. She do it not just for herself. She also helped my uncle to write the name for the donations. And guess what happened? Of course, there are many other elements that involve, but eventually, uh, my, my, my uncle passed away. And this uh, cousin of mine, uh, she's still living well and happy. And now she become very sincere in the Dharma, and Dharma become part, an uh, essential part of her life. So this is the real things happen in my, my, my own context. So in order to re receive blessings, our faith with the Dharma is very, very important. And not just having the faith, we also must understand and put into practice. And this is how blessings can come to us. Yeah. So first is faith. And the second type of blessings or the elements to receive blessing is keeping our morality, uh, cultivate our virtues. If you wonder why, in your life, you want to help someone, two persons come into your life. One person is not ready, and the other person is ready. Who will you help? If you have limited time, who will you help? The person who is ready. So does blessings. If you have cultivated your virtues in your daily life, when you ask for blessings, because we are more ready, our mind is purer, blessings come. Simple? Simple formula, right? <laughs> and the third one, in order to receive blessings, we start by blessing other people. Such as when you have things to share, we share. When, uh, when we are doing something good, also think of other people. Always think of others before us. And there's another way that we can receive blessings. It's In Chinese, they always say that. Yeah. So these are the three components that I thought I'd like to share with regards to how to receive blessings in your life. First, faith. Second, cultivate your virtues. And third, in order to receive, we give first. You want love? Give love. You want money? Give money. <laughs> you want health? You can support others who are sick and also keep a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, this is so simple and yet we can do it in our daily life. Just put in a little bit of effort. And that is our determinations in the 10 pyramids. Okay? Yes. So this is the first part of my talk. And the second part of the talk is for a Theravadan Buddhist, when we talk about blessings, which sutta comes to your mind? Mangala Sutta. Yes. In the Mangala Suttas, we have this uh, 38, 38 greatest blessings that Buddha uh, shared and uh, wanted us to practice. I think many of you have heard about Mangala Suttas. Uh, today, we have no time, so I will sub-classify the Mangala Suttas into four main categories. First, happy life, how to receive blessings for happy life, how to receive blessings for happy family, to receive blessings for wealth and how to receive blessing in order to have a blissful mind. Let's start with happy life. Many of you are very good with Mangala Sutta. What phrases, which 38 phrases in the Mangala Sutta relates to happy life? Anyone want to try?
Give you two oranges if you answer. <laughs> Very good. Okay, I own you two oranges. <laughs> yes, the first one, associate, not associate with the foolish, but associate with the wise. This is one of the greatest blessings that will lead us to a happy life. You can think in your life, I'm sure you have good friends and bad friends that influence you. And if you continue to stay with the good friends, like you know your Kamala, so, uh, your, your the Dhamma friends who invite you to come and do good, to come to the centers, to, to do charity work and all do and do all this. How did you feel? You feel happy, you feel life is richer, you are actually living a more meaningful life. As compared to someone who asks you to go to like, you know, engage in killing activities like fishing or drinking, you know, breaking all the precepts. So associating with the wise and not associating with the fool, that was one of the elements to have a happy life. And the second one would be not to do evil, to have self-discipline, that puts oneself in the right cause of morality. Why is that so? So that I don't get into trouble. Look at the current case in our parliament. Breaking the precepts and what happened? Oops. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Buddha is very wise. They've been teaching us all these 25,000 years, 2,500 years ago. Morality, keep our morality will lead us to happy life, will lead us to, to, to you know, avoid all the downfalls. And the third is stay fast in virtue. Stay fast in virtue. Why being virtuous will receive blessings? Why Buddha have power to give blessings? Why the Sangha, Holy Sangha, have the power to give blessings? Not because of who we are, but because of the virtues the Holy Sangha acquire, I mean, they practice. And because of the purity, it, the, heart, the mind is so powerful. And when they share the metta, it's very, very powerful. So in this sense, like if we keep our virtue pure, where your mind is uh, very, very pure. Even if you, you want to tell other people, or you see other people in trouble, I wish you were well and happy because of the pure heart and the pure intention. And you are speaking the power of the truth. And that itself carries great blessings. So this is happy life. Happy family. Two more oranges to give. <laughs> you want to try? You already have two, so cannot. <laughs> you know, in the Chinese, we always have this saying, Jia he wan si xin. Oh, you know, he neng sen chai. So when the family, okay, harmony brings happiness and harmony brings wealth. So when the family uh, relationships are good, blessings will come again. Blessings will come. You know the simile that I say earlier on, one that's ready and one that's not ready. When the one is ready, when you receive, when you want to ask for blessings, they receive easier. So does family. If those family that are the harmonious, everyone is doing good, when they ask for blessings, very easy. They can feel it. They can receive it. Like, you know, things start to get better. Um, as compared to the family that is in conflicts, always a lot of conflicts going here and there. Very, very difficult. Very difficult. I've been doing some social work. 
and many, many families. Um, yeah, so the family just couldn't help, no matter how hard we try. Yeah, so I reflect back according to the Dharma teaching. It's like, I think Buddha is so wise because, you know, you see them, there's a lot of um, fights in the family. Um, they shout at each other. They don't give kind words. Uh, even the, uh, you know, bring our emotions to other, our family members. All this would actually reduce your, the good energy in your home. You know? So, according to the Mangala Sutta, Buddha say, respect those that are worthy for respect, which is the seniors in our family. I think this is not so difficult for the Chinese because this is also part of our culture to respect the seniors. And Buddha further say, cherish your spouse and care for your children and to speak kindly. These are few of the highest blessings that Buddha teach in the Mangala Sutta. So I just extract and put in this category of happy family. And now come to money, money, come. <laughs> you are lay people, you know, you still have to live a lay life and money is still important. It is not all, but you cannot, you know, life, it's a lot easier if you have some, uh, you're comfortable, you know, with, with your income and expenses. No need to be a lot, but you know, you're comfortable. There's, there's no deficit. Income and expenses are always balanced. And of course, with a bit of savings for the future. So what did Buddha say with regards to money? He says, to be able to acquire harmless skill set and to be skillful in his work, engage in peaceful occupation, Generous in giving, of one's friends and relatives. These are the formula. Make sense? If you have a, if you are skillful, this is where you don't have to be very smart. But if you are skillful in what you do, you are so good at what you do, people will come to you. I was with the youth yesterday and uh, Buddhist fellowship youth. So yesterday, because Valentine's Day is coming and yesterday we decided to have a bonding sessions. So we do flower arrangement, a flower bouquet. So everybody was happy, you know, to doing their own flowers. And I was uh, reflect back on the friends that I know that teach me how to do flower arrangement. I was the one to teach them yesterday, but I learned from a sifu who teach me flower arrangement. So this friend of mine, he don't like study. He don't like to study. And he actually quit his education like prim secondary one or two. So he was, after the NS, he don't know what to do. Uh, so he borrowed a small sum of money, just a few thousands from his father, and he go and learn flower arrangement. After learning the skill, he's very good with his hand and very creative. So after learning the skill, he opened a small little flower shop. And now he's one of the big Singapore importer of flowers. So skillful in what we do, will bring money, money come. <laughs> and uh, generous in giving, generous in giving, again is shi bi so gan yu fu, when we give, when we give, people receive your gratitudes. And I'm not too sure you heard your belief. I'm not too sure if you have a lot of uh, good people around you to help you along the way. In Chinese, we call gui ren, that support you and help you in your life in some way. 
why they don't have other people and help you? Blessings too, you know, those people who help you. It's the blessings in your life. It's probably if you believe in cause and effect and karma, chances are in your past, one your past life, you may be the person before. You all may have a good relationship in the past. So that this lifetime when you get in contact with you, you just feel that like you just want to help you. So we do not be stingy when we uh, help other people. Not necessarily in terms of monetary. It can be service. Having even a words of encouragement or a listening ear when people are in crisis. These are generosity that we can give. Okay, And this, in terms in the future, we don't know. We don't know. We just continue to do good. We don't know, but in your life, you will receive a lot of uh, blessings in terms of good people will come, come in to support you, to give you some good advice, or give you some good lobang that you know it will help you in your career or your income. Okay? And the last is blissful mind. This is the most important in regards to the Buddhist teaching. All the good that we do, all the blessings that we receive, eventually the most, uh, the ultimate aim is the cultivations of our mind. And in order to cultivate the mind, Again, Buddha, in the 38 verses of uh, Mangala Sutta, he prescribed medications, TCM prescriptions. Be humble, contented, grateful, patient. Listen to Dharma regularly. So you are already receiving the blessings today. Associate and listen advice from the wise. So that we know what to do, what, how, to, how to cultivate our mind. Awareness, on, awareness of our own thoughts and actions. We don't just listen, but we do. Awareness on our own thoughts and actions. So our actions, speech, and thoughts, we start to purify from negative to positive. And by doing all this, it will gradually reduce our defilements, our bad habits, and naturally your heart will become open and there will be more happiness that you feel in your heart base and you can share with other people. And by being open and happy, you will feel that, hey, my life suddenly becomes so good. Even without the holy water, but I feel that I really receive so much blessings. We can receive blessings in our life. Yeah. Any questions? Questions? Brothers and sisters, any questions? You are the one receive blessings, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Discussing Dhamma also blessings. <laughs> A good time to uh, put in the seats so that you can receive blessings later on. It's a new year. So mm. better ask a lot of questions. Yes, oh, yes. brother. Just have a question. Um, how to help people see that they are actually receiving blessing on a daily basis that we think it should be grateful and gratitude, but they don't see it. And they keep mm. on blaming someone's all the negative thoughts. How, how to do that, how to help them to see it? Mm -hmm. I think it's a good question. Uh, by default, those people who have not trained the mind 
most of the most of the time their mindset is in the negative mode. This is where they blame their life. They don't see qualities. They don't see happiness in life, and it becomes a vicious cycle because our thought will lead to our actions and our behavior, and because of always this negative, their life will never get out of that negative cycle. So what I do is normally I'll explain this to them. Our thoughts, our actions, our behavior, and how we regulate our emotions. Basically, it's who we are. What affects how you want to be. And it is really a choice. It's really a choice. If you want to continue to behave this way and think this way, this will become the life that you will become in the future. And sometimes I will share with them real life story that I have come across in my life. Those who have well planned and their old age, and those that decided to change. In five years, it will not be immediate, but five years later, ten years later, those who have already succeeded because of their transformation, I think sharing life story, real life story, will help. Yeah. Thank you, brother. So, anyone else? We have uh, another three minutes. Maybe you can squeeze in one or two more questions. Better invest in your blessings now. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. I grew up in a Taoism and more Chinese kind of background. So uh, now I'm more focused on certain tradition. So what uh, was said about the thinking, uh, say the topic of this morning, blessing, resonate a lot with me. And whilst I choose the own direction for myself, what I think is best for physical, mental, etc., there are friends and family around me, they I think it's been a long time, mm. so they will just stick to what they know and what they believe in. Mm. Then certain times there are conversations, there may be uh, different views. Um, so I, I came in January and I, I was sharing with Brother Tyree, I started mm. more serious practice last year. Mm. So throughout one year, slowly this evolved. At first I was kind of uh, bringing up my views. And after some time, I got lazy. You got what? I got lazy. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, quote unquote lazy as in, I think uh, maybe we should stick to what we believe in and they can stick to what they believe in. So I was just um, uh, wanting to raise this question. How do we balance what we think is correct? Um, or where maybe in the future we get to a landing as in a more neutral position? as versus sort of, you know, people they are closer to us, uh, what they think, et cetera, you know, how should we mm -hmm. balance our future conversations or mm -hmm. difference in views, even within Buddhism, mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. already a massive, massive topic. Mm -hmm. So that's my question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, good questions. What is the highest view in Buddhist view? You know, the, the Dhamma, the... Noble Eightfold Path. First is right view. So what is the best view? The best view is no view. <laughs> when we're talking about non-self and emptiness, we're talking about no view. Because when you hold your view, if you hold a view that is subject and object, and you are falling into the, the samsara world, so um, coming from this context, you know, the best view is no view. 
even though I feel that, oh, Tevrata is so good for me, I benefited so much, but it doesn't mean that it will suit everybody because we are living in a multicultural world. So having practiced the, the virtue of respecting the differences in others, I think this is also one of the way that we can, uh, we can maintain the harmonious in the relationships. Because what is suitable for me, it might not be suitable for others. We might give some suggestions and really it's up to them to decide what they want. Yeah, I hope that answer your question. Thank you very much, Sayle. Thank, Thank, Thank you, brothers and sisters, for the questions. Now we will transfer it over to the next section, which is the offer of the business. Now we are going to set up the room. We will invite uh, Sayale to uh, take a bit of rest in the Sangha room. So let us be in Anjali position. And say sadhu three times to the family. Thank you very much for the wonderful talk today. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Oh, by saying sadhu, you are rejoicing. And when the dewa are happy, they will also bless you. <laughs> then we should say three more sadhu, even, <laughs> even louder. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, so brothers and sisters, we are moving on to the offering of requisites session. There is a little bit of a protocol to adhere to um, because during this COVID times, uh, we are not supposed to touch the offering and we are recycling the offering. So um, the procedure, our uh, volunteers will uh, demonstrate to you. So basically, when we call out your names, you will prepare your, we will prepare your offerings according to what you have registered for. And then when we call out your names, you will proceed through the center uh, of the hall and um, go to this uh, uh, front of the, uh, the hall. And then you will uh, offer the offerings to the Sangha. But you will not touch the offering. Our volunteers will be the one who represent you. Um, then afterwards, you may pay respect to uh, the Sangha member. So, yeah, once uh, the offerings are being put in place, you can pay your respects and then uh, move on. Then we will call out. Uh, so the name of the next persons that needs to be ready will be showed on screen. So if your name is showed on screen, just be ready. And once we call your name, proceed towards the center of the uh, Dhamma Hall, again to um, the place to basically uh, pay respect and offer the offering itself. But as you can see, our volunteers will cycle the offerings itself. Okay. So, are we ready? Um, yes. So as you can see on the screen, um, the name of the person that will go next will be shown over there, uh, which is uh, Anna Tikonova, uh, Choi Kwan Lo, and Ivy Wong and family. We will uh, prepare two sets and we will invite Sayale to come over here to accept the offering on behalf of the Sangha right now. 
So let us be in Anjali position again. So now Anati Konofa, Choi Kwan Lo, and IP Wong and family. Um, uh, two sets of uh, CNY hamper ropes and requisites. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Coming up next, uh, Choi Kwan Lo. It's not on the list. Ropes and requisites. Sadu, sadu, sadu. And the third one. I feel Wong and family. Next one, uh, Hong Yi Lo. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah, Ivy, Ivy Wong and family, um, two sets of uh, hampers and ropes. So next is Peng Yi Lo. Temper, uh, requisites and ropes. Sadu sadu sadu. Mr. Jenny Heng. Rep represented. Temper, ropes, and requisites. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Next one. Yeah. Jocelyn Take free Yo. opportunity to, to acquire merits <laughs> so that you can receive a lot of blessings in your life. <laughs> so today we have so many, many chance to uh, say sadu. Temper, ropes, and requisites again. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Catherine Wong, temper ropes and requisites. 
Ropes and requisites, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Roy Ng, ropes and requisites. Represented again. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Quite Wei Li and Xiu Pei Wei, ropes and requisites. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Next, Yurike Laurencia, ropes and requisites. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Like Chong Tan, ropes only. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Doris Tan. Ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Erwin Permata. Ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Geraldine Tay. Ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Yes, Lim. Represented. Ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Dear we pay. Ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Karen Lee. Oops. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Karen Van Den Boom. Ropes. Ah, uh, sadhu, sadhu. Nita to ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Shirley Shen ropes. Ah, uh, to sa, to Jun Hun Te presented. Ropes. Ah, uh, to sa, to sa, to. Who Rodrigo and Hasanti Rodrigo? Ropes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. 
Veronica Ng on behalf of Ang Kui Ng. Ng. Ropes. Sa to sa to sa to. So now we will proceed to the offering of the requisites for the Zoom participant. Annette Tan, two sets of temper uh, ropes and requisites. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Elisa Liga, temper. Satu, satu, satu. Grace Yo, Temper. Satu, satu, satu. Meng Hui Chia, Temper. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Ning Mao Wong, two sets of hamper. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Siu Kim Cheng, hamper. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Sim Tong Hyang Rex Temper. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Susan Yap Temper. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Ina Yani Jo Ropes. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Lisa Liga Ropes. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Jason Pe. Ropes. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Su wei tan. Ropes. Sa tu sa tu sa tu. Now um, we will proceed to the offering of requisites that were made um, in last minute register. <laughs> <laughs> Last minute registers, uh, registrants basically. So, Wana Surya Tanubrata, uh, Hemper and Ropes, is that right? Hemper and Ropes. Ah, so. Sadu, sadu, sadu. She's rather tan for the mistake. <laughs> so now it's Angela Tan and family. Temper. <laughs> sadu, sadu, sadu. Basically, because everyone rejoiced for everyone, so it's okay one. So only in BF, you buy one, you get many, many. Lim Hui Wun and family. A hamper and ropes.
Ernita Rose. Sabe, sabe. Arina, requisites, temper. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Andra, Raharja, and family. Requisites, temper. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Dudley Tay, temper. Represented by Brother Chong Jin. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Then last, last minute registrant, myself. So, <laughs> Hartanto. Uh, requisites and uh, ropes, please. And we will uh, move on to the next uh, session, and um, we will uh, invite Sayale to lead us in the sharing of merits and. Blessings. Brothers and sisters, let us be on unjolly position. Hey, now that we have spent the whole morning doing good, which we will receive a lot of blessings from that, uh, keep a happy mind. And now we would like to share all the good deeds that we've done to... Uh, to all the garden protectors and all beings. Okay, we put our hand together and we chant together. Ita wata cha amehi sampadang punya sampadang sape dewa anumodan tu. Sapa sampati sitiya Eta wata cha amehi Sampadang punya sampadang Sape buta anumodan tu Sapa sampati sitiya Eta wata cha amehi Sampadang punya sampadang Sape sata anumodan tu Sapa sampati sitiya Whatever merits which we have acquired, may all beings partake of it, may they contribute greatly to their happiness. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And before we transfer merits to our departed one, uh, today we have a special person that we also want to delegate and share our merits with. He is the brother of our uh, Buddhist fellowships long-term friends and big supporters, uh, Madam Annie Tan, brother. 
I think Brother Tan just, uh, Brother Tang Chai Hawk, he, he just passed on. And um, let's settle our mind. And we also share our merits with this uh, Brother Tan who just passed on. I understand that uh, Sister Tan, any Tan, has been a great supporter for Buddhist fellowships. So it's like whatever. Um, I mean, you know, all the centers, we, we need uh, supports so that everybody could come here together to, to have a conducive environment to practice the Dharma. So in that sense, we have gratitude to, to any for what they have done for Buddhist fellowship and also to us indirectly. And I understand from any is that uh, Brother Tan Chai Ho, he has been a very, very good grandfather, a father, and friends to all his friends. He's generous in sharing what he has, even as a retire. He make a point to drive his grandchildren to school, drive his um, daughter-in-law, which is very rare in Singapore, to work almost on a daily basis. And he often treats his friends with good food. Basically, he shares what he has with people around him a person that's fulfilled with a lot of virtues. And with that in mind, we also share whatever merits that we acquire with him. And let's chance the transfer of merits to the departed together. Dhamme-nyati-nyang-ho-tu-sukita-hon-tu-nyata-yo <laughs> Itam me nyati nyang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo Itam me nyati nyang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo May all our departed relatives and me brother Tang Chai Ho to take a swift rebirth in the good place. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think you all have a part two activities. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Sayole. Brothers and sisters, let us uh, three bows to pay respect to the Sangha. First bow. Second bow, third bow. Six sadhu three times to rejoice. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Now we Thank will you. invite. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we will invite Sayale to proceed to the uh, lunch. Let us uh, still be in jolly position. Okay, brothers and sisters, please be in your comfortable position. Now we will proceed to our gratitude activity. Now, why do we have this gratitude activity? Because during Chinese New Year, we often offer oranges. But as a Buddhist, we don't just do tradition for tradition only. We, of course, would like to associate a certain quality to it. And we would like to use this opportunity to cultivate this quality. And what quality is that? That is gratitude. So the Buddha said, for, uh, there are two levels of people. People with no integrity and people with integrity. People with no integrity will be ungrateful and unthankful. Whereas people with integrity will be grateful and thankful. And usually, the people that is the most difficult to be grateful for is our parents. So today, to represent this, we will invite a pair of parent and child as a demonstrator over here. But basically, uh, we will all partake in this opportunity, take this chance to cultivate this gratitude inside of us. While they are in front, 
we could think of someone that we are grateful for, be it our parents, be it our past uh, relatives, uh, friends, benefactors, teachers, boss. I'm not sure if you think about your boss right now, but um, if you are grateful to your boss, that's a good thing as well. So to whoever it is, you can put it into your mind, settle down, just cultivate this feeling of gratitude to them. And then um, the volunteers in front will do the ceremony basically to represent us all. So may I invite um, Sister Ro Lee and Leon to come forward. So please be on your position and have a thought of people that you would like to be grateful for. And at the sound of the bell, Leon will present the oranges. And with that, he also represents all of us to offer our gratitudes to our parents or to whoever that we have in our mind. So let us proceed then. Let us uh, cultivate our mind and think deeply about those people that has benefited to us, feel this deep sense of gratitude inside of our heart. And with this, we offer blessings to them. And as parents to the child, the parents will give the gift of wisdom. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Finish. So, <laughs> so Leon and Sister Roly, uh, please uh, back. And there will be a third part of our Chinese New Year special activity, which is the again gratitude and well wishes tree. So, what we will do is that we will still be seated over here. Please be in your comfortable position. Our volunteers will bring a tray filled with a uh, well-wishes tag for you to fill. So uh, volunteers, if you please would proceed and provide brothers and sisters with the well-wishes tags. Uh, please take one. Don't take too many. <laughs> and again, as Aya has said today in the talk, if we want to invite blessings into our life, first we bless other, other people first. So therefore, if you would to write some well wishes for others in this well wishes tree, think of it as your wishing well to, to the people that you want. And this text will still be hung on that tree for the rest of the month, I believe. So when people come in, they can see if you write their name, basically. Um, if you write their name and then they happen to be in BF, they will be able to see that you have wished them well. So with this, if you wish other people and not just wish yourself, um, then you will invite blessings to your life as well. Anyone else who hasn't got the uh, well wishes tag? So once you have finished writing, our volunteers will take the tag from you. Uh, just uh, indicate that you have finished writing and then they will put it on the well wishes tree for you.
Okay. So anyone who has not finished writing their well wishes? Maybe we give another two minutes. Brothers and sisters, you have uh, maybe a few more seconds. So if everyone has finished, we will move on to our closing puja and announcements. And basically, after that, we can all go home. <laughs> okay, so is everyone finished? Anyone else still writing? Okay, I think everyone is finished. So a little bit of announcements first. Uh, next slide, please. Next Sunday service, 20th of February, we will, in, we will have uh, Dr. Ang Beng Chu to give us a talk on, are you really happy? So for those of you who are unsure whether you're happy or sad, you can attend the talk next week, 20th of February, uh, Dr. Ang Beng Chu. Next slide. This is the whole uh, schedule for talks on February, 2022. So again, next week will be Dr. Ang Beng Chu. And then the last, of, the last week of the month, Ajahn Kemawaro will be here to give us a talk about flowing with life, how to deal with uncertainties. Next slide. We also have BF Youth Sessions as well as Indonesian Dhamma Discussion. Um, if you wish to see all of these details, you can go to our website as well. Next slide. Um, for BF Junior Youths, we also have the sessions on Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. So if you have uh, children, sons or daughters who are aged between 13 to 16, we also have a session for them every Saturdays. Next slide. Um, the very popular Dhamma Foundation course uh, is back with the session two, uh, the practitioner's Dhamma. Um, there will be on-site meditation classes as well as Dhamma classes. So the on-site meditation classes is on Sunday and Saturdays, uh, whereas the Dhamma classes will be every Saturdays, uh, 2 to 5 p.m. here in BF West uh, Dhamma Hall. Next, we also have Yin Yoga a free Tuesday, but it will be in BF East. Next slide, please. Um, we also invite everyone, brothers and sisters, to be very generous. And again, if you would like to invite more blessings in your life, uh, Aya say if you, uh, Sayale say if you want to gain more money, then give more money, right? Then if you want to buy property or be able to have property in your life, Maybe you should help BF to get a property. So help build your own Dhamma house by participating in this um, uh, rising fund, uh, fundraising activities. Um, please help BF to secure our next home, basically. So you can provide bank transfer, pay now, cash, nets, or check, monthly gyro. We accept everything. So please uh, uh, donate generously. Thank you. Next slide. Oh, sadu, sadu, sadu. <laughs> uh, we don't have a closing chant or? Okay, apparently not. So, oh, there, it's here. Okay, so end of service dedication, brothers and sisters, let us be on Anjali position. I dedicate the merits which I have accumulated to the cultivation of my mind in order to bring happiness and benefits to all sentient beings. I dedicate the merits to my parents, children, spouse, relatives, friends, colleagues, and my adversaries, wishing them long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May we never part from the triple gem, and may we always walk the path towards enlightenment. Closing homage, let us pay respect to the triple gem. 
Arahang Samma Sambutho Bhagava Kutang Bhagavantang Abhivadimi Vakato Bhagavata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sangho Sanghang Namam Sathu, Sathu, Sathu. With that, brothers and sisters, Happy New Year. And please be well and healthy. Do not mingle, straight away go home. Okay? Bye bye. While you're leaving, there is